It's time for some tea and talk about Isla Mazard. This is a word. So hey y'all, good morning. So today I'm really excited because it's the People's Climate March, which is happening all over the United States in cities. Unfortunately, y'all, I'm not gonna be able to go to the march. I have to work today, but if you don't have to work, I urge you to please find out if there's gonna be a march in your city and get to it. It might even be started by the time this video is posted. Today, I'm drinking a little bit more tea. As I told you all yesterday, uh, if I had tea with you again, I was gonna have this Mandela Masala, and I don't know if you can read it, but it's a uh, Raybos tea with organic spices, cinnamon, cardamom, clove, ginger, black pepper, it's caffeine-free, it's 100% organic, it's fair trade. Certified, what I like is even the packaging is made with, you know, recycled materials, which is kinda cool, you know, it's like everything you can do. Every little thing counts towards helping the planet, right? So um, that said, moving right along. So as I told you all, I was gonna talk a little bit about Isol Mazard, who's also known as Abba Le Ciel. And the reason I am talking about Isol today is yesterday I got an email from him, which took me completely by surprise. In fact, like the last person, not, I don't know the last person I was expecting to get an email from, but I certainly was not expecting to get an email from from Isel Mazard. So I didn't even, as far as I was concerned, Isel Mazard doesn't know I exist. And confidentially, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't I don't partake of his content that much, and it doesn't show up in my you know in my suggested videos for whatever reason. Let's leave it at that. So the fact that I was getting an email from him was a little. It was surprising, but it was also refreshing. Um, and changed my opinion of him for a few hours and I'll explain why. So um, the email was lovely. It was, you know, him saying, hey, you're a vegan content provider on YouTube. I'm a vegan content provider on YouTube. The world is rather small and there's no reason that we shouldn't know each other and have some kind of exchange going on this platform. And I agreed at the moment. I agreed at the time. I agreed at the time. And uh, I'll get to it eventually. So uh, he had suggested that I watch a video of his called On Community, which I did. Um, and it was, it was interesting. It was him mostly talking about the need for brick and mortar centers for veganism in major areas of the world if we're going to move veganism forward uh, and he compares it to mothers against drunk driving he compares it to the lgbtqia plus movement when it was still just called gay rights and um, talks specifically about success of that movement in canada and you know i think about it mostly around the activism around HIV and AIDS awareness that was happening in the United States in 80s and uh, you know especially in uh, centers like San Francisco and New York City and I was thinking about folks like Larry Kramer I was thinking about folks like David Feinberg who were actually interestingly enough you know artist uh, Larry Kramer is a playwright and ended up writing, you know, a, a, a very famous play called The Normal Heart, and it was produced on uh, HBO just a few years ago. Um, uh, kind of like they did a remount of the play as a as a miniseries, I believe, for HBO, or maybe it was just a film. I'm not sure, but. Um, in fact, I think it was just a film because it's a play. So how could you do a miniseries of something that's only two hours long? But uh, anyway, he wrote another play. I believe he wrote a play called As Is. But Larry Kramer uh, had a lot to do with raising awareness about HIV and AIDS th using theater. And David Feinberg is another person who himself was HIV positive and wrote a series of powerful books. One of them is called, I believe he wrote a book called 86th. Um, uh, I think he, I believe he wrote a book called Spontaneous Combu Combustion. I think I've read, I think I've read most of David Feinberg's book. And if you haven't read him and you're interested in kind of what the 
New York activism scene was like in the 80s around HIV and AIDS awareness in the LGBTQIA plus community before it was called that when it was still called the gay rights um, movement. Um, please do look it up, you know, we're t and it, it talks a lot about organizations like ACT UP. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, I agree with, with Eisel in that regard that centers certainly do help. He talks about the fact that it gives people a place to go to for answers if something happens that might affect that community. People have a place to go, so you know, you know, a, a, you know, a trans person, a trans person gets uh, bashed. Uh, you know, there's a place to go. There's a center for that, uh, and New York City has one on on Thirteenth Street, right near Seventh Avenue, um, and there's centers like this in major cities around the country, and I suppose around the world. So he mentions that veganism needs this. And I agree, but my next question then for Eisel is if he believes this strongly, where's your center? Where is your center? What are the steps that you are taking other than making a video saying that you think it would be nice? What action steps are you taking? I agree. You know, you guys have heard me talk about alt space until I'm, you know, a little darker brown in the face, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, you know, yes, I believe it should exist. You know, I make it, but that's the kind of person I am. Obviously not everyone is like that, but I do believe there is a certain welfare mentality that, that people might have where people believe things should exist and they wait for it to be delivered to them. And some, some of that, I think, has to do with, you know, the privilege of living in a Western society. Anything you want is available for you somewhere. You can pick up the phone, you can get on, you know, the web, and you can, you know, boop boop or, you know, Google and have it at your house within 24 hours if you have the money, right? If you have the money for that. But that's one of the reasons that I love my life in Detroit is because in Detroit, people have given up on that way of thinking. People have given up on that way of thinking for years, you know, for 20 years some in some cases, right? People have given up on the idea that big business is coming back. People have given up on the fact that the city is going to be able to manage, maintain the infrastructure. People have given up on the fact that arts and culture will simply emerge from the ground, right? Or that food will simply emerge from the ground. It doesn't just simply emerge from the ground. You have to get out there. You have to put it in the ground. You have to put that, you have to put the seeds in the ground. So perhaps Eisel's way of supporting such a movement is to talk about it and maybe he feels like a magician, his words will have a magical effect and that these centers will spring up. But I would say a lot more might come from, you know, going out and looking around where you are, seeing if there is space available, or even if there's someone's house that would be willing to host a regular meeting of vegans, a regular meeting of vegans. Right? Somebody who was willing to make that commitment to be there every Wednesday, every Saturday morning, Sunday morning, whatever day it would be so that people would know that there was a place that they could go to have discussions around this or watch films around this or learn around this or get cooking demonstrations, right? These are, there are ways to get these things started without even having a lot of resources, right? All someone needs is a place to live and I imagine that most people have that and be willing to give up some of that space, dedicate some of that space for something that they strongly believe in. And, you know, that's, for me, that's alt space. So, yeah, that's my response to that video is that I agree. Go. Get busy. Go get busy. And then, of course, you know, I'm on his channel and I'm browsing through his videos. In fact, I had to browse through his videos to find the one on community. And I came across his video on Black Lives Matter. And I don't know, y'all. I don't know why it bothers me. 
Um, you know, I'm not, I don't want people to think that I'm that committed to the idea of Black Lives Matter. It's, I don't want people to think that I feel like Black Lives Matter is the savior of, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement is, you know, is the be all and end all. I do believe that they are the movement that has traction right now that is dedicated to, you know, addressing state violence against black and brown people around the world. Yes, I do believe that. But do I believe that they're necessarily going to be successful? No. And I think that there are many ways to criticize them for their efficacy without calling them the new KKK. But that's another story. Getting back to Eisel, His video seems to be focusing on Black Lives Matter lack of a constitution. And specifically a constitution that states explicitly their position on violence. And I disagree. I think that there are enough pointers in the principles to see that, you know, they talk about, for example, engaging through peace. And it's difficult to engage through peace using violence, right? Violence can be a means for achieving peace, yes. So it's not, you know, a, you know, it's not an ironclad defense of Black Lives Matter to say that discussing their stance on peace is the same as discussing their stance on nonviolence, but it's a, it's a pointer in the right direction. And they also talk about restorative justice, which he mentions in his video specifically, and I've talked to all of you about restorative justice at length when we were talking about the whole you know, taking vegan cheetah to court, right? So you guys know my position on restorative justice and the idea of restorative justice is that it is non-violent. It's a non-coercive approach. It's a, it's a healing approach to justice as opposed to wanting to send people to, you know, for lethal injections, right? Um, or just putting them behind bars, right? Restorative justice. And so there are lots of ways to interpret that. And of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that they even believe in this, in this for all people. They could just believe in this for people of color. They could. That's an interpretation and it's a reasonable interpretation, but it's not the only interpretation and that would be a matter of opinion and not fact. But going back to Eisel Mazar. What is unfortunate in his video is that he uses vegan gains video to demonstrate the violent image that Black Lives Matter currently has. And as you all know, I've made a video looking at each of those clips that were presented in Vegan Gains by Vegan Gains and showing that most of them weren't even related to Black Lives Matter. One of them was a, a, a full-on hoax Another of them was the Black Panthers, and by that, the new Black Panthers, not the original Black Panthers, but this new Black Panther movement, which is, I believe, a Black nationalist, nationalist movement. I don't deny that. And also, uh, a, a, someone who goes by the name King Noble, who uh, is a self-described Black supremacist. But that's not Black Lives Matter. Uh, he used clips, he used various clips, again, that were not related to Black Lives Matter, other things that were Black Lives Matter, but were open to inter interpretation. But of course, when you put all of these things together, it's a very damning picture of Black Lives Matter if you believe they are Black Lives Matter, which they're not. So Eisel Mazard using that video as a backdrop for his discussion on why Black Lives Matter needs a constitution was, I think, a little deceptive, no? Because I could put up a video of, you know, porn stars with their faces blacked out and name anyone's name and call their reputation into question, right? Not that it would necessarily need to call their reputation into question, but the society that we live in now, there's sex is stigmatized. So you might stigmatize someone by simply bringing up you know, sex with their name. This, in fact, is exactly what happened 
to Anna Scanlon. Her name was mentioned in the context of a sexual act, and it was a threat to her self-image. So how is it any different to call out Black Lives Matter in the context of these horribly disturbing, violent images and attribute those images to Black Lives Matter? How is that any less damaging? And, you know, Eisel himself says that, you know, um, there are people out there who would find it, you know, cheaper to pay someone to knock them off, right? So these, so all of these kind of double standards and all of this hypocrisy flying through the air. And so I simply called that out in an email to Eisel and his response to it was basically, yes, but can you argue my, my, you know, constitution uh, argument? And, and I, so, and, and, and of course I feel like, yes, that can be argued. There are many organizations that don't have a, an explicit anti-violence stance. McDonald's? Does McDonald's have an anti-violence stance? And McDonald's is actually responsible for violence throughout the world and exploitation of workers throughout the world. Does Walmart have an anti-violence position? I don't know. Someone show me Walmart's anti-violence position. And of course, the United States itself has a constitution and it does not have an explicit anti-violence stance and we see what the United States is engaged in these days. So, Eisel, as much as I appreciate your argument, I don't think it necessarily holds water. Why does Black Lives Matter need to have an anti-violence position unless for some reason we assume that that organization is likely to be violent? and that we need to, before we can support them, have them make an explicit statement that says they will not be violent. There was broad support of Occupy Wall Street and the Occupy movement. Did they have an explicit non-violence position? I don't know. And of course they were demonized as well in the media, but it remains, the question remains, is why are there so many organizations in existence, so many entities, legal entities, and corporations are, you're creating a person when you create a corporation and you don't even have to make a commitment to that person being nonviolent? So, I don't know, I don't know, Eisel, I don't know how I feel about all of that. Anyway, I don't have long to spend with you today. I have to go to rehearsal. I'll be spending this entire weekend from eight, and I'm sorry, from 10 in the morning until eight o'clock at night in rehearsals with the company. And I will have some footage from those rehearsals for you, but probably not until Monday. I hope everyone remembers that I'm not going to be doing a live stream. I know I said I might do one early in the morning, but y'all, it just, it goes too quickly. I have to leave my house and all that. It just goes too quickly, but I will be vlogging from the rehearsal and I will and I will try to include some of that video. I might even upload some of that later on today. All that said, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big